stress level has recently increased. Excellent. <laughs> Incoming message. Welcome, agents, to episode 52 of Behind the Scanner. Your hosts for tonight are Andrew Krug, Virginia, Daphne D. from Washington, D.C., and Jorge Pedro, Mexico City. Our special guests tonight are Zavid Navarro from Spain and Ahmed al Shawari from Egypt. Joining us for the Weekly Truth to summarize the storyline aspects of the last week is Jose Antonio Rey from Operation Essex. And also joining us tonight is special guest, Dr. Edgar Allen Wright. For a look inside the scanner tonight to discuss game updates is Fed Games. I'm Kelly Colton. Welcome to the show. The Q&A tool is enabled for tonight's broadcast. Submit your questions throughout the show and we'll ask as many as time allows. If you know someone who would make a great guest, submit their information to us at bit.ly slash bts underscore guest. Finally, you can watch past episodes and subscribe to our channel at youtube.com slash behind the scanner. And now, your hosts of Behind the Scanner. <laughs> Good evening, agents. Welcome to episode 52 of Behind the Scanner. We have a good show planned tonight. It's going to be a great ride. And as mentioned earlier, our first guest is Chevy Navarro from Barcelona. Chevy, good, good morning for you. So, hi. Hello. Yeah, I have to apologize. You can tell that uh, us American English speakers here butchered everybody's name. So, for the yeah. record, it's Chevy, not Chevy. <laughs> Chevy. We'll get we'll get to Ahmed's name when when in his when it's his turn. So, well, welcome Chevy. We appreciate you joining behind the scanner tonight, and uh, especially thank you for joining us in the early morning hours. Um, you know, in getting to know you, I would describe you as somebody who's a bit of a self-starter. Um, in preparation for the show because you have this weird thing where you go and you seek out things to learn and study them unprompted all by yourself. And this includes learning how to program at a really young age. I think you were maybe, what, 11 years old at the time when you learned how to program HTML and do some things like that. And yes. you also you taught yourself English too. So, you know, let's just jump right into it. What else have you taught yourself? Where, where, does, where does your knowledge start and stop? Well, when I, when I was a kid, uh, we already had the internet at home. Uh, I was 11, and most of the knowledge, especially from uh, learning English, was from uh, the, the internet back then. There was only uh, sites in, in English, maybe German, and some other uh, websites in, in French. And, well, uh, based on reading, reading and reading, you conclude or uh, deduce the, the meaning of the words. But... Of course, I, I went to high school. We have uh, some basic English in there, but besides from learning the words like eat, fish, open the door, close the window, and so there's was no more thought about it. And about the part of programming, I, I, I had a book at home from my father, basic. Uh, apparently, I liked it, and as soon as I had the internet at home, uh, I started to to invest how to make. HTML and so well, I started the Dragon Ball fan site, you know, with uh, Stunichin Marquis and Giz and very cool stuff from back then. Interesting. And, and do you use anything that you taught yourself uh, for your job? And um, well, what is that job that you do? Well, I work in a, a multi brand car shop. I'm in the, in the workshop reception where and to customers uh, I do the bills uh, with the park cards and uh, well something that I tell myself that the uh, services from, from my job 
maybe we have six computers and I'm the one who has to fix the computers because no one else does the job. But I don't know. I think that's all. And there's nothing really that I learn myself for my job, really. Okay. Um, and between work and ingress, how much sleep do you get on a regular basis? Well, uh, I work like 10 hours per day and I have uh, one hour of traveling. I work a lot. I, I'm all day outside of my, my home just for the, for the job. And if I go to play Ingress, I used to sleep really, really few hours, like sometimes only three or four hours. Maybe you know, we're doing operations or, or just uh, I just want to destroy some town or whatever. Uh, sometimes I just sleep 50 minutes. I don't know. Damn. <laughs> and I thought I had problems with my insomnia, so, well. <laughs> a lot of kids uh, who are into technology at a, at a young age also become gamers. I assume Ingress is not your first video game. Can you tell us what other genres and games are your favorite? Well, I play a lot of games, really. Uh, as I already said, I had internet at a very young age. Uh, I always had a computer at home. Um, you know, the Indiana Jones, The Fate of Atlantis, Simon Max, and that freaking games back again. But uh, the my favorite games will be the uh, multi like MMORPG, multi mass online uh, RPG, such as uh, World of Warcraft or or the first one that was uh, Ragnarok Online. There's a uh, kind of games that uh, you have to play with other people to to achieve things in those games, and uh, I really like that kind of games. So games where you have to collaborate with people, I guess that, that that's a natural fit with Ingress then. Just uh, that's the best part of Ingress because uh, it has that. Uh, you, if you want to do all kind of stuff in this game, you can go. You cannot go alone. You have to do map uh, with other people. Not only people, the just uh, cars and and you know and unintentionally you you know people in this game. You meet people and you make friends everywhere you go. That's the uh, that's the greatest part of this game, really. Yeah, definitely. And, and I, now that we're on the topic of ingress, you know, you've accomplished some pretty neat things. Um, I think one of the things that caught my attention was you made it to level 8 and then to level 16 from going to the same portal and hitting the AP mark on that portal. So is there something special about that portal to you? Is it just because you made level 8 or does it have some sort of personal meaning? Well, the portal itself uh, is nothing special. It's just a, a column with a woman on it. But... When I when I started in November 2012, uh, I I made the tutorial. I don't know if no is the tutorial is the same that when I started, but uh, that tutorial what where I was asking for uh, to play three portals in a uh, in the map. When I finished the tutorial, one of the portals was still there. I think it was something to do with the tutorial, and uh, it turns out that no, I discovered that it was just a coincidence. So that portal was the first I hacked. Mm, it's that for for the nostalgic uh, feeling, you know. It started in that portal, I get to a level eight in that portal, and once again I get to level sixteen in that same portal. It's just the nostalgic part of it. Well, uh, for everyone watching, remember remember that you can submit questions for our guests. Um, those of you watching via YouTube, uh, you have to click on the banner at the bottom of the video that says be part of the conversation. And from there, just click the square grid menu icon on the upper right, and then select Q&A. So, like Caroline, our guest last week, uh, you call me family. Uh, what causes you to become so close to your local agents, and how has that crossed over to life outside of Ingress? Well, uh, what should I say about it? There is a um, <clears throat> there is a, a daily dose of uh, faction love 
you know, laughs, good times, and you, 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 we're already friends and traveled a lot together, and we been in traveling and sleeping together, we've been in the cinema, been partying, doing barbecues, any kind of stuff that you uh, would relate like a, a, a friend of yours. And, you know, uh, that's, the, that's the part where it turns out that uh, we consider each other like a family. And, well, it, it's, it's, it's not like a family, uh, a personal family, but it's like a, a second family. It's like English, it's a second job, you know. And you meet very lovely people, and you you don't want to to skip them. I find interesting that that you were sleeping together, but well, we talk about that in another time. Um, since you have gone from level one to sixteen, and played since the very very beginning of Ingress November to two thousand twelve. How would you set the requirements for new levels if the decision was yours to make? Well, I, I will still cap the levels with uh, an AP requirement, uh, like it's been always. But instead of batches, uh, I will make some skill tests, uh, something like destroy 200 resonators and deploy 100 resonators in 15 minutes or whatever, like an like a test of uh, speed test or, or farming test, whatever. I, I feel batches that, like nowadays, batches require a lot of grinding, a lot of uh, hours, and there's a lot of uh, agents that cannot achieve that because uh, maybe they're not in the in the best region to to get the, the medals. So I will say the, a different kind of stuff, like like an exam, like are you uh, are you good enough to be in level 17 or whatever? Well, that's, that's, that's interesting. Yeah, kind of like a uh, game mechanic IQ test, I guess. That could be fun. Well, Jorge mentioned that you've been playing since November 2012. So how did you find out about Ingress back in 2012? That was kind of the infancy of Google+. Plus. So how, how did you get into the game? Honestly, uh, it was a friend who told me about Ingress. It was uh, June or July, I don't know, I don't remember. And it was like, hey, uh, this is about uh, to release a closer beta of an augmented reality game that has been designed by Google. And I instantly freaked out as Google making a game where that has to be amazing. Uh, well, I asked for my beta invite and I received it at at the 18th of November. Uh, well, the reason I keep playing is is what I really stated. Uh, there's a lot of people I met in this game. Uh, the level means nothing. I'm 16. I, I don't feel like, wow, I, I did everything. No, it's, it's just the people that you play with that makes you feel like the a necessity to, to, still, to be still playing. And... It's the, the, that social impact that makes this game amazing. Well, now that you are 16, do you have any current ingress goals or objectives in the game? Um, I'm aiming for doing big operations like covering a couple of regions or big fields. Uh, recently, we made uh, uh, 500 links or more, I don't know, to the same portal. It was a fun night. We we were all night long. Uh, I slept two hours <laughs> before I get to job to my work, and I will not keep playing like uh, an AP hunter or, or, or to chief medals because uh, it doesn't. It's not a motivation for me. I just uh, I will keep uh, teaming up with other agents and I continue playing with them. I I don't, I don't have uh, any direct objective right now. Well, what about anything related to Ingress outside of the scanner? Are there places or people you'd want to visit or play Ingress with? Yes, uh, there's a lot of cities I would like to visit. There's a uh, well, you know, it's it's always the same problem. Not enough time or money, but I would like to play Ingress in the in, in many cities around the world. I've never been in in America. 
and I really wish to go to America. Never been in Asia. I've been in, in almost any country in Europe, but I'm still missing some uh, missing places or out of the globe. Well, we'd love to have you here. Yeah. Damn. You did it. Happens. You did it. Everybody has to take a shot now. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, it's all good. Chevy, I was saying that you can come to Mexico anytime. Um, all right. With all your English experiences, what is your most embarrassing English story? Uh, uh, this has been an embarrassing story, at least for me. Besides, uh, well, sometimes I've been mistaken by a drug dealer in the night and, and, and <laughs> was stopped by the police, something like that. <laughs> but it's it's never been something about. I have never uh, serious troubles or, or whatever. Uh, I had luck by, by in in these terms. So, what's it like playing Ingress uh, back in the early days? I mean, how long did it take you to make level eight, um, especially over where you are? Well, uh, Ingress in the very beginning. Uh, was uh, was hard to play because there were no portals. My town only, only my town only has uh, had two portals on it, <laughs> and I had to travel like 15 minutes uh, by car to the next uh, town to in order to play with more than 10 portals. So getting to level A was hard back then. I'm not from Barcelona. I will live. Uh, I live in the north of Barcelona. I'm like uh, 15 minutes from Barcelona and. Uh, whatever I wanted to make AP, I, I had to go to Barcelona where the portals were. And it took me, if I'm not wrong, it was March of 2013. It, it was uh, four months to get to level eight. How, how many months did it take you to get to level 16? Uh, two years, exactly. <laughs> it's two years better than me. I'm still level 13. Someday. <laughs> Someday. Noob! Noob! I, I know. I'm a, I'm a noob. Total noob. So, all right, Chevy, are you interested in answering some viewer questions and see what the, the peanut gallery has to say? All right, shut. <laughs> all right, let's see what we got here. Opening it up, and um, how about we go with Juan Jose Mangalos? I don't know if you know him or not. He has a question for you. What was your favorite anomaly and why? Well, I, it's hard to say, but I, I, I must say it was uh, Shonin in Bilbao, uh, north of Spain. Uh, a lot of Asians from my region could travel because it was the same country. And we were like together, same, same hotel, same same party. It was like uh, we became stronger than, than ever in in our uh, in our connections. Uh, we lost. Uh, I had to say that, but uh, it doesn't matter because uh, it was the fun part of the the, the anomaly that uh, that comes from me. I enjoyed a lot uh, showing in Bilbao. It was a uh, really fun anomaly. Uh, Someday I'm going to travel over there, and you can show me all around your country. So, all right, I'll come during an anomaly too. All right, so let's move on. We've got uh, Chori Payne wants to know. Oh, she, she or he is also from Barcelona. She says hello and wants to know what do you think about the shards? Well, shards is a uh, a very exhausting uh, thing to do because it. it you need a lot of time, a lot of money. There's a has been, uh, well, you know, is is moving uh, shards from any part of the world to a a, a target. It is. Uh, I feel like it's very exhausting. I, I never wanted to be involved because, uh, as I already said, I work a lot, but uh, and I want to sleep. Um, but shards is, is is like a it's like something I don't want to be related to, really. <laughs> As somebody who doesn't already get sleep, I, I, you have nothing left to, to give when it comes to the shard game. So 
you're already not getting much or any. So yeah, I, I can see how you feel that way. All right, um, we have one more from, uh, actually uh, Juan Jose Mongolos again wants to know, what is the craziest thing that you have done for Ingress? So maybe the craziest, I don't know, portal you've been to or trip you've taken or uh, what stands out your mind? The craziest thing was uh, I was about to get my vacation in August like last year and I had no plans for, for, for holidays. So uh, I asked the uh, local community if someone wanted to go to Praga to, to the Czech Republic. There was the Ilios anomaly in there. Uh, I offered my car. So we went from Spain to Czech Republic. This it was like uh, two days of traveling almost. We stepped in, <clears throat> stopped at uh, a night in Munich. Uh, this trip, this, this, this traveling was uh, was long, but, uh, but uh, very funny to do, and for me it was the craziest thing because I didn't know if my car will will be able to do such such uh, long traveling, and yeah, that that might be the the craziest one. Yeah, probably not a good idea to break down in a foreign country. But <laughs> that could cause some problems. I can see. Yeah. All right, so our last one for tonight is. Um, Let's see here. We asked about what your most embarrassing moment is, but what do you think your greatest ingress accomplishment is? Well, uh, I've, I I don't want to sound like weird about it, but uh, I I love the the community we have, and I'm one of those that they pay working for them and trying to be like better with, with everyone yeah, seeking knowledge, uh, explaining the new players how to play, and and so it's, I think this is the the best thing I, I I achieve in this game. Well, all right, it's that time of our BTS tradition when, for better or for worse, uh, we give every guest at the end of their interview about sixty seconds to talk about whatever they want, do a shout out, show off a talent, or Pretty much, the world is yours. So, um, whenever you're ready, please go ahead. Well, I, I will shout to the to the new players. I want them to to know that this game is about uh, meeting people. Uh, you have to team up with other agents uh, in order to do, achieve these things in this game. So, it's really important that the players uh, join the local communities. And, and do not fear uh, meeting other, other people playing because uh, they are really willing to help you. Uh, not like a stalker, but uh, you, just, uh, you, so you, you will need some guidance in this game. And also you have to meet the people because uh, if you want to do an operation, a big, big field, or, or what, even if you want to find a portal and level 8 in an area that is not a uh, higher level, you will need to, to receive the, their help. So. For the rest, for the rest of Asians, I, I would say that focus on having mm, good times, uh, ignore the haters, have fun, you know, assist to events, go to anomalies, because uh, you, you need to feel the, the English power. You know? uh, this game is a life-changing experience, and everyone should enjoy it. I like that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it was such a Pleasure meeting you. Great to have you on tonight. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Chubby, for joining us. Really appreciate it. Especially in the very wee hours of, of oh, dear God. Morning over there. So. Spanish. Come on. He's just getting started. <laughs> uh, he, he doesn't sleep at all anyway, so he never That's really went to bed, right? It's so, not yeah. like a problem for me, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> we should have you on every week. You'll be yeah. good to go. So, all right. Oops. Andrew, where'd you go? Did Andrew mute himself? All right, well, um, I think that I will uh, step in for Andrew. Uh, well, before we get to our second guest, it's time for the weekly truth. 
Uh, this week, we reached out to the founder of Operation Essex himself, uh, Dr. Edgar Allen Wright, to see if he would join us. And, well, after a lot of back and forth and weighing the risks, he decided to accept our invitation and um, is appearing in order to deliver the truth himself. So uh, viewers like JoJo Stratton and other Operation Essex investigators, as well as I guess, the Everyday Curious Agents, submitted questions for Dr. Wright uh, that we will get to in a second. So having said all of that, Dr. Wright. Hi, uh, so parents. This, oh, it's Daphne. Hi, Daphne. It's, it's good to be here. Uh, yeah, forgive me for the state in which I'm forced to appear, but I think we all know that I have to maintain a somewhat secret identity, and uh, uh, so my voice and image have, have been altered. I hope this will not be distracting for you. No, absolutely. Um, I think we're just all glad to have you here and know that you're safe, at least for now. I believe myself to be safe. I do. There's some unusual noises earlier, but I believe that, that I'm safe. If I suddenly disappear, let me apologize. It, it hangs. No, absolutely. Well, uh, Dr. Wright, let's hit the ground running. Um, what do you think of the disappearance of the Niantic project members uh, now that two of them are in the portal network? Obviously, it begs many significant questions. Seems at least by some theories, that the Shonen Stone caused a recursion. And that in and of itself becomes very problematic because if it caused a recursion, is there an implication that, that the researchers of the Niantic Project were simulacra in the first place? I don't think so. But of course, I don't know. That's a worthy subject of investigation. I, I think that it's possible they were they, exposed to extremely high doses of exotic matter on Epiphany Night or during the project, and that's why they may have been selected. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see, but yes, it is a most curious situation. I seem to have lost your audio. It's not unexpected that people would be messing with our communications. So, Dr. Wright, uh, uh, Dave Atlas Ops M wants to know, what kind of threat do you believe the Shapers are going to see or pose to humanity? Well, you know, there's, there's the Shapers and there are the Nazir. And I can't speak to exactly what the threat of the Nazir might be. I think that we all know we have mixed feelings about the Shapers themselves. That's the origin of the Enlightenment resistance. As far as the Nazir, I don't know. And in part, I'm agnostic on the topic because I do not consider myself either enlightened or resistance. In fact, I might not be a sensitive. But what I am is somebody who has undergone what is most probably a hack of the human brain, some unknown source. I'm sorry, I seem to be having audio problems. Okay, so Dr. Wright, uh, Drew Dondera had a question. What is the true purpose for Operation Essex? <clears throat> With Operation Essex, we have assembled the most elite set of investigators in the Ingress world. And it has been largely self assembling, but we've called through them. And the purpose is to discover the truth and the truth about it all, because all of the truth is linked together. The truth of, of whatever is going on in the transdimensional portals, the truth of what the NIA may or may not be hiding, or what the corporations are doing. We are trying to get to the bottom of all of that. And quite frankly, I have my own personal motive, and that motive is to reassemble my own thoughts and brain. I totally understand, Dr. Wright, after all the all the things you have been through. Um, 
Um, now, Thomas Artiaga wants your opinion of the Truth Seeker program, and what do you know, if you know anything, about its origins? Well, I know, really, frankly, what many of you know, and that is that it's believed Truth Seeker or a Truth Seeker program uh, was originally Verity Seek, which was a program created by by Richard Love, also known as P.A. Chappelle. And it was created for a very different purpose. At least that's his story. What do I really believe? I believe Truth Seeker was probably created by the NIA or some other similar organization as a psychological analysis, relationship analysis program, which may at one point have been released to the public as a dating or relationship analysis program. That part of what has told us might be true. But it's unclear to me. I don't know anything. I only have my instincts on this. It would be very interesting to get Mr. Chappelle onto the show and ask him that question directly because he has not been what I would describe as forthcoming on the set. Now, Dr. Wright, I have a question uh, that's that's really been intriguing me for the last couple of weeks, or I could say even, uh, months, since this video was released. A while ago, Clue mentioned that the Niantic Project members were so busy with their experiments that they didn't realize that they themselves were the experiment. Who do you think manipulated them? Maybe Calvin? Calvin would certainly be the most obvious suspect, and obviously, as I dealt with Calvin on Warta and White House. I certainly saw a great deal of behavior from him that, let me say, was very much oriented to get a result in an experiment with what at times I would consider to be a reckless disregard for the well-being of his researchers. That having been said, I cannot prove it's Calvin, and there are many other forces at work here, not to mention the NIA and the NIA, and so it may have been them, but I do believe that the Niantic researchers were misled as to the level of risk they would be exposed to. Now, Dr. Wright, uh, we all know that uh, Hank Johnson has been has been traveling around the world and doing a lot of work. Uh, Andre Knosek wants to know what your opinion on Hank Johnson's work is. Well, there are two ways to view Dr. Johnson. <clears throat> Dr. Johnson himself has done some extraordinary work. Quite honestly, his early work on 13 Magnus, a paper which I happened to get a glance at on one occasion was fundamental work on the subject, and I think, probably for not for good, it was the work that Calvin based much of his reconstruction of anti magnus on. That's just a suspicion, but I think it's well-founded. Hank Johnson has the other side of his personality where he's a bit of a glory hog and media hound, but I leave that to Hank Johnson. His work has been excellent. The thing I would like to take a serious look at from Hank Johnson are the breadcrumbs that were dropped, that he dropped for himself before his recursion, because those breadcrumbs might hold the key to what is to come. And the curious thing is, I don't believe Hank Johnson himself ever harvested all of them. Now, Daniel Van Oz has, uh, has a really uh, really interesting question for you. Uh, he wants to know if you could please share some of your thoughts about one of your dearest friends, uh, Deborah Bogdanovich. Well, I'm a gentleman, and I would like to keep my comments on, on Dr. Bogdanovich to those subjects which are a matter of the public record, and there's quite a bit of that. Deborah was a student of mine. As best I recall, I met her as a graduate student, though there have been allegations otherwise. Deborah Bogdanovich is a tireless researcher who was born to search for dial tone. It's something deep in her soul that she has wanted to communicate 
with the first alien beings or extraterrestrial beings at Sunny at uh, Arecibo, and then later with transdimensional beings. She has a passion for this, and that cannot be denied. And one must never underestimate Dr. Bogdanovich. Obviously, like all of us, I've been worried about her. Who wouldn't be? She's acted in a erratic and I guess I would have to say a reckless way. Now, Edgar, if I may call you Edgar, uh, Mr. Sean Pard observed that recently Willem Jarvis's self-proclaimed acolyte said that the portal at the town gives her all that she needs. Now, he'd like to know if there's more to discover concerning the Niantic project besides XM, Dark XM, the Shapers, and Nazir. That light's a curious being, as you know. She apparently was some kind of a disciple of Roland Jarvis and was involved in the Society for the Prevention of Cruelty and Artificial Intelligence, or whatever that shady organization was known as. But I will tell you on a personal note, there's something about her that's very familiar. And that's part of the, for lack of a better term, sharded memory I have that I just cannot place her, but I feel I've known her before. I don't know if she was a student or how I knew her, but I feel I've known her. And I look forward to seeing more of her. What I don't know is what she meant about the world. Obviously, as the new leader of the Enlightened, she might be feeling that the Enlightened need a boost. But that is just speculation. So, Dr. Wright, my friend Mike Wisinger is concerned about your memory. He asked if you have recovered any more memories, and specifically anything related to Juice Club and its relation to either the Institute for Non-Demarcated Research or the Waratah Symposium. Well, I'll tell you the truth. Um, my memory is like a puzzle half assembled on a table, like a jigsaw puzzle. And some of the pieces are connected, the broad outlines have been put together. Some are salvaged memories, some are memories that I have glued together from what we'll call objective sources or agreed upon sources. Uh, it is a problem, and it's not just a problem with the memory, like you forget things. It is that some things, times things are wrongly filed together, if that makes sense to me. And so specifically, the Juice Club, I was very young when the Juice Club experiments were carried out. What I recall, and this may be an artificial memory, is that I was more a, like an intern in the Juice Club projects and on the periphery. Whereas Warta and Whiteout, you know, obviously I, I participated in, and I have fleeting memories of, of the early experiments that I've begun to put together. And some of them, uh, would you like to hear what, what some of them might be? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, it seems to me that they were doing a lot of experimentation on things like counter clairvoyance, um, mind reading, other feats of mental magic. That's where they started. What they were trying to do is use what in the day we call extrasensory perception as a tool of intelligence and counterintelligence, intelligence gather. And you know, Warta and, and Whiteout were connected to one another. Um, you know, as time went on, the experiments became more focused, like remote viewing and even remote object manipulation. And much of this may sound bizarre to you, and I can see why. But at the time, we took it very seriously because we had opponents who were doing the same thing. What is important to note for the current investigation is that many of the theories that we had then now take a whole new significance in the light of the discovery of exotic map. I think that's all I can tell you. I, I, 
quite sure I could be arrested if I were to go into any greater detail. I hope that's satisfying. Dr. Bright, um, do you believe that, in fact, Oliver Linton Wolf made the test power cube he was working with explode in purpose, casing Epiphany Night? What I believe, and I think it is inarguable, is that Oliver Linton Wolf and Dr. Calvin and Yen Ni acted in an extremely reckless manner. Was it deliberate sabotage or self sabotage of the experiment? I don't know enough to know that. I think that were we ever to be able to re-enter the Nyanic facility, which is a very important thing to do one day, we may be able to find out more about that. But that's an excellent question, and it's, it's something we ought to look into because it is becoming more and more clear to me that what has appeared to be an evolving situation for the past two years is now looking more and more like there is a grand design behind it. And Calvin and Anti Magnus and Jahan and more recently Ada, I think were always part of that plan. Bear in mind, this is just my theory, but I think it's very supportive. All right, Edgar. Um, now, Andrew had mentioned the Waratah Symposium. Uh, Daniel Bedouin wondered if you could summarize for us the purpose of Project WIDA and its predecessor, the Waratah Symposium. Um, how did they lead to what became the Niantic Project? Well, there were many very similar people involved in those projects. And you know, the, there was continu continuity. I think, as a matter of fact, most of the Niantic Project members at one point or another were involved in symposium. As I said, my memories are shattered, and I think I confuse and blur the two projects together. And obviously, for sheer ethical reasons, I, I couldn't go into a lot of specifics. But I think what I would tell you is that I view for a talk and WIDA as being, and Niantic as part of a continuum of ever more ambitious projects that were exploring, say, I would not use the word occult, but hidden aspects of the universe. And I believe the discovery of XM changed everything. And we've only begun to understand the possibilities and the fringes of what we consider. 10 years ago, tens. Synchronous. Is that a satisfying answer to your question? Absolutely. Thank you. Appreciate that. That's right. Um, our friend and ESSEC researcher, Jixian Li, has a multi part question for you. He wants okay. to know. Best researchers there is. I'm happy to answer any questions. Great. He wants to know uh, what's the origin of Magnus and Act Magnus, and uh, were they originally all Magnus, and if so, what broken them up? Well, I couldn't speculate on exactly what the origin of the terms were and when they were first used historically, but what I can tell you is that we have good reason to believe that the 13 Magnus mythology goes back to ancient Egypt, the story of Isis and Osiris and Set. As you'll notice, there were 13 gods, primary gods, in Egyptian mythology. And it seems like that story is a metaphor for what might have happened long ago. And that there was a quest to reassemble certain objects or find certain objects that once had powers that no longer they possess, or that imitations have been created. Uh, Anti-Magnus is, is a very different proposition. I think if you were to look at the historical origin of Anti-Magnus, I would look in, in the Babylonian culture. I would look at the Epic of Gilgamesh and the story of Inanna and Enki as a place where maybe they understood that there was another group present, and they went into to 
counter that group. Now, whether they were in direct contact with the Nazir at that point, or whether 13 Magnus was in direct contact with the Shapers, I, I can only speculate. Dr. Bright, of all the things you've uncovered about the Niantic project, James Webley is interested in what the thing that's in what's the thing that surprised you the most, and which thing that concerns you, uh, which is the thing that concerns you the most? There's a lot that concerns me. I think the thing that we need to be concerned about imminently and urgently is the new fusion between transdimensional for lack of a better term, beings, concepts, data, ordered data, and our own technology. That, to me, is the potentially the key to the abyss. And I think we have to watch very closely now with recent developments with Ada and recent developments perhaps with Omnivore and the other cybernetic entities, because once you cross the line from transdimensional to artificial intelligence and, and to intelligence itself, you are, you are stepping, I believe, into extremely dangerous territory. That definitely sounds concerning. Absolutely. Yes, I would say it was also quite surprising to me, some of the recent developments, and I think we have to keep a very close eye on Shonen, and we keep a very close eye on Washington, D.C., because it seems like a number of elements are coming together for that particular novel. Interesting. Can you expand upon that? What what sort of elements are you referring to? We just see forces of motion. We see, you know, Hank Johnson received a mysterious document from Nigel Moyer, the past to Susanna Moyer. She's going to be in Washington. We see the glyphs, the light moon, shards, excuse me, the Lightman shards converging. We see that that's the location where IP Tech, where the NIA are centered. We remember Washington, D.C. was the place where the kind of horrific and ghastly encounter between Roland Jarvis and Oliver Lindenwell took place. It just seems to me, and this is only instinct on my part, but it seems to me that something very big is going to happen. Not to mention, of course, the incredible portal importance of, of the state of the capital of the United States of America. <laughs> well, as, as somebody who lives right so outside of D.C. and will be participating in the anomaly, I don't know if that excites me or concerns me, but uh, if you're concerned, that definitely concerns me. I'm concerned, but I'm fascinated. I don't know that it's necessarily something bad. And it's very easy to fall into the trap of thinking that evolving change and dynamic action will lead to bad consequences. But I would certainly be very mindful. I think you are perfectly positioned in a number of ways to, frankly, be that chronicler of what is about to happen. Well, speaking of concerns and changing James 13, uh, I believe another Operation Essex person is interested in knowing what the lasting effects of your extended exposure to high levels of XM and your experiences with XM-infused mind hacking has been. Well, we touched on this earlier. Frankly, I don't know because, to be totally honest with you, my own perception of myself in, in, before being exposed to exotic matter, if indeed that is what my impact me, before being exposed to exotic matter is an imaginary construct that I've created. So I'm now creating a construct to synchronize with something that I believe I once was. Is, is that a little complex for you? Or, uh, I, 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 I realize it. I'm chaining together a number of very abstract thoughts. It, it but, makes sense. It makes sense. Yeah, and so so my experience with it, you know, was it was very disoriented. But what's very interesting is that when your your thoughts are scattered about like puzzle pieces and you begin to reassemble them, 
in the process, you begin to get a much deeper sense of what the picture is and what the process and what all the thoughts were in the first place. So I tend to see it as, as a good thing that's happened to me, though, to be honest, I wouldn't wish it on anybody else. All right. Well, there's something that the people in the Essex Hangout witnessed, um, an attempt to ingress you. Um, after that, you were gone for a while. Do you believe that these ingression attempts have changed you in some way, or are you the same as you were before? As I, as I said, I, I wouldn't really have a way to know for sure, but I will tell you right now, I'm getting a, a, a very anxious, anxious feeling, and I, I heard a telephone ringing. Nobody is supposed to know I'm here. I, I'm not sure that... that, that um, that uh, you know, we're, we're I, I I should continue. I think that I, I think I get up here. Oh no! What? Let's give him a few seconds to Wait. come back. Interestingly enough, right before <laughs> I right think before we, we have were about to, to do go? our well, right before we were about to do our interview. All of our cameras just went black and we couldn't connect. Yeah, not 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 a joke. It, they really yeah. didn't. That was this madness. Going crazy. This is madness. this is this is not scripted. The reason why I saw Jose on camera for the first half of the interview is because we simply couldn't do anything. So I have no idea what's going on with this. Mercury retrograde, maybe. Hopefully that's you all. Know, that was my excuse when we. Yeah, that was my excuse when we started having problems. It was so difficult, your question, Daphne? Maybe. Maybe he needed to get out. I don't know. He We're said something We still like have three I questions have left. left. <laughs> yeah, however, that question was uh, a pretty hard question for Edgar. Uh, what, yeah, we saw, it, so. what we saw in, the, in that hangout is, is something that hasn't been talked about until this present moment. Uh, the attempt to ingress Dr. Edgar Allen Wright was something that we kept in the Essex Hangout for months. It was uh, an attempt last year. Uh, someone or something tried to get into Dr. Wright's mind, and it's something that we hadn't talked about or posted about. So this is the first time it comes to light. That's why it may it may be threatening to him. What did you? All right, so there's probably a whole bunch of people watching that that don't have an idea as to what you're talking about. So when you say ingress. What, I guess, what did you guys see? What does that mean? So we were talking to Edgar as usual, and he suddenly started seeing weird images on his screen. After that, he was gone, and we couldn't locate him. We tried to contact Ada. Ada was not reachable, and we don't know what happened. We don't know how he may have changed or what may have occurred in, in, in those minutes. Well, um, <laughs> she needed I, it, can you answer us the other three questions? <laughs> 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 the other questions we have. <laughs> I would love to. I would really love to, but I don't think I can. Dr. Uh, Wright has a lot more of background than I do. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. All right. let's, well, let's, um, let's go for inside the scanner, right? Or not? No, no, no. We got the code of the show first. Although oh. I need to. Do, I'm not, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't. I wasn't. I wasn't ready for it. I got. I got. I got to pull up the background. So hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Uh, episode 52. Okay. Well. Um. I guess so. Moving on. Uh. This is the code of the show, and these are limited redeemable codes. Um. You can share them. They might be for 50. They might be for 500. They might be for 5,000. Uh. We're not really sure. We don't know what they contain. And there you go. We figured since we were having a special guest, we would have multiple codes. All right. So three of them there. I'll hang out. Pretty long. No, I have turned up my cell phone. <laughs> so there you go. The codes of the show, multiple ones. This is starting. <laughs> Close it. I'm surprised. Close I'm surprised. I'm surprised you don't actually have the uh, the, the the music queued up for her. <laughs> oh, do, 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 do. All right. I think that's long enough. Mm -hmm. we need to move on. 
Damn. So going, no. going, and gone. There you go. Um. All right. So we've got some time now. So let's just move on. I guess. If he comes back, we can continue where we left off. But if he doesn't, uh, let's just move on. So, um, before we get to the next guest, our partners from Fev Games are here to take a look inside the scanner. They're going to break down the app changes, edits to the game mechanics, and describe any sort of new features that might have come out or been released. Uh, this week, we have we do not have Dustin Downs. We have Don Tumbleson here joining with us. I apologize, I didn't upgrade update the script from last time. So, Connor, <laughs> the floor is yours, sir. Sir, take it away. Yes, I am no Dustin Downs, but I will be taking If you have a cowboy hat, you're, you're welcome to wear the cowboy hat if you have one. I would need, a, I would need some glasses and a hat to fill those shoes, but <laughs> that's fine. Well, it's pretty pretty interesting week. We actually have a new Android version once again, 1.77.0. And it actually brought a change that sparked a lot of conversations among Google, Google Plus. Hidden in that little version was something described as disabled new portal submissions. Currently disabled, but still in the code base nonetheless. And with the Cedar Metal being temporarily disabled and things all related to that, who knows if portal submissions are just going away. Could be temporary, could not be temporary. No idea. Already, right now, currently, you can no longer select a picture and share it to the NIA to make a portal. So that is gone. I don't know if that's permanent, but that was a big change in 1.7. So. In other news, according to medals, for all those that are crazy about getting every medal possible, the Go Ruck Challenge that's going on at the DC Anomaly coming up has confirmed that you will get a medal. I don't know if it's for completing, taking part, or just being involved in the challenge. You will get a medal for your scanner for that. Now there's another one added to the collection that means you have to physically be at that site to obtain, which is cool. On top of the medal speaking, we had some pretty interesting changes today to the medals as they display on your phone. Previously, the medals would show up as you entered them chronologically. So if you entered Shonen, then Recursion, that's how it would appear on your agent screen. Now, earlier today, they all appeared from earliest to latest, meaning that the recursion medal was first and the shonen was the last. And then about an hour and a half ago, it re-reversed back the other way. So the oldest medal, I mean the newest medal, shonen, was first, all the way to the right would then be the recursion medal. And as of right now, I just checked, it is still like that. Who knows if we're going to still get a couple little switcheroos going or if any metals are going to be involved in this. But it is just the anomaly metals that have been reordered. Now, no, there's a lot of people that are upset about this. Like, people talking about how they don't like it since they can spot players that... I mean, all players now have the same metals in a row. Before you could spot if someone put them in out of order or some other thing, it's causing some drama, but... Those are the big, big changes that have happened in the past week inside the scanner and just around the community related to updates and whatnot regarding the game. Excellent, man. Thank you for joining us. It's it's always cool to get the breakdown and you know somebody that goes and dives into the code and catches the new features is <laughs> it's always welcome. Appreciate it. No problem. Well, and our second guest for this evening is Ahmed El Sharkabu. Damn, just Ahmed. Ah. Sorry, sir, Ahmed. I, I don't want to butcher your name anymore. He is from Cairo in Egypt. And welcome to the show, Mr. Oh, you're muted. Oh, that's that's two shots. Oh, you have to unmute yourself. Oh no, you can't unmute. There's you can't unmute. <laughs> oh <laughs> no. One of those days. Uh, Jesse, any you know? Let's see here. What can we do? Residual issues from earlier. 
Hey, Ahmed, try disconnecting and reconnecting real quick. Have you done that? Give, give that a shot. Yeah, hopefully. I can um, leave Ada you know, attacking us. Somebody, somebody made the comment, though, that Mercury is in retrograde, and I guess that's supposed to be really, really bad. Yeah. And this this is, <laughs> this is really... We've never had these problems before. No. No, no. We never had first time. We have problems. Did you black out? We didn't have a guest. Yeah. Seriously, is he coming back? Uh, yeah, I mean, he hasn't reconnected yet. Okay, here's Ahmed. Ahmed is back. Can he unmute himself? Let's see. I don't see him as being muted. Is Ahmed? He... Nothing? No. Can't. Oh, no, I really want to talk to you, too. Yeah. Well, it's going to be one of those nights. Do you know sign language? Do you know, can, can we... Or can you try connecting from your phone? Oh, yeah. Can you try connecting from your phone? From your phone. Yeah. Click oh. on the link in the in our Hangout and try connecting from your phone. See if that works. Ahmed, there's a new link there. Oh, yeah. Uh, that, so, Ahmed. That, that link yeah, works for us. Yeah. All right, well. Oh, no, he's coming back. He's coming back. Okay. Please Any luck? But hey, we can hear you. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> like, you oh, oh, my. Yeah, gotta love. You know, it would right. be so much easier if we just pre recorded everything, I swear. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, thank you for joining us, my man. I, I appreciate it. I know the sun is probably coming up right now where you're at. Um, you know, one of the things I really love is that you know, Ingress is a global game, and guys like you and girls like you, guys, gals, women, men, are willing to come online at 4 a.m. and share your stories. So I appreciate you bearing through the technical difficulties and, and time Actually, and everything it's 5 for joining us. Well, now it's 5 a.m. We started at like yeah. 4 a.m. Yeah. So. All right, so let's, not, let's just get to it. Let's start with the hard-hitting questions first. This was one that was asked a lot. How did you come up with your your agent name? Okay. Uh, my friends called me Shark, uh, as in Sharkawi. Mm, when I started the game, I tried to choose this uh, name, but uh, it was already taken. So I figured, why not use my last name and at, put beside it my first letter of my first name. That seems simple enough. Have you ever considered yeah. changing it? Did you ever want to change it at any point in time? Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, no. No. No, no, no. Come back, come back. Maybe go back to this. Oh, sweet. Will it? Hello. Oh. It is that kind of night, guys. Yeah. Hello. But he's got a really cool story to share. Nothing. Hello. Ahmed? Yes. Oh, oh, we can hear you, but no see you. Mm. <laughs> yeah, sure but I've done nothing. So you can keep, <laughs> keep telling your story. Yeah. Just, uh, hold on, hold on. Hey, Ahmed, in, in our Hangout, there's another link you can click. I can guarantee you, you will be able to connect from your computer <laughs> using that account. <laughs> Okay. So try disconnecting from your phone. Click that link. Join us. We'll wait here for the 15 on seconds. On your computer. Seconds. Yeah, on okay. your computer. On your computer. That this one will work. Oh. Guaranteeing it. <laughs> so hey, uh, DC Anomaly is coming up May 30th. Daphne, are you ready for that? Are you part of the Go Ruck team? Um, no. No. <laughs> You're not going to carry around 75 pounds worth of weight and another. <laughs> nope. Nothing. No. 
See. Now, I'll barely be carrying my little my phone, my wallet, my uh, bottle of water, sunblock. And there's so much, there's, there's like big old, you have your own entourage of equipment that you've got to bring. And it's going to be rainy and hot and, yeah, no. but it's really we really everybody to come. Jesse, can oh, you mute Emmett? No? No. Did, uh, you guaranteed him, dude. He went, did he click the new link or did he click the old link? Oh, he doesn't. Yeah. No. All right. You know what? Um, well. Welcome to the first two-hour show. Yeah. <laughs> uh, hey, I, how would you feel about coming back next week? Is that something you'd be interested in? Do you have the time and the ability to do that? I know you got up early with us. I, I hate to do this, uh, but if we can't really see or hear you on your phone and it breaks up, then using your phone isn't much of a solution either. So, um, Give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you're willing to join us next week. We actually we actually did have a last minute. Yay! Yeah. Oh, <laughs> thumbs up. Let's, let's no, I give don't. A tr uh, uh, another try to, to his phone. You want to give it one last try and make everybody yeah. wait longer? Yeah. He deserves it, man. It's 5 a.m. All right. One last try. Thanks for everyone else who's sticking around and being patient. I don't know if you're sticking around to see if back on or that works. Hey, man. Okay. We see you. Can we hear you? Okay. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> are you willing to take a question for the from the audience? <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, no, no. We'll, let's let's continue with the regular. So, Daphne, you're up. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, we might have had an error in your introduction uh, because although you um, you're actually now living in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia, uh, are you there temporarily, or did you move? work or did you leave the country because of, well, what happened before? <laughs> uh, no, I came to Saudi Arabia many times before. Um, my father works here, so yeah, I think I came uh, over the past four years or so. Yeah, uh, right now I came for work, um, considering being here uh, Did we lose him again? Dun, dun, dun. He is there, but we can hear him. His picture still. It might be. I wonder if he has <laughs> Wi Fi on his phone. All right. I'm going to make the executive decision and call it. We, we do. We actually we did. Because of the anomaly, we had a last minute resistance guest cancel. So we do have. A blue spot open, um, which is understandable because they were going to be participating in anomaly. With that, we will work with him and try to get him to come next week if he can. Um, otherwise, we will definitely have him in the future. I am sorry, everybody, for watching and for any issues. Uh, whatever happened to Dr. Edgar Allan Wright must be spreading. So, I don't know. Hey, Amanda, are you there? Hello. We can see you, but not hear you. I can hear him, but yeah. like... Traffic. So when is this Mercury retrograde over? Yeah. Well... Probably after the... No, I'm sorry, before the anomaly, because, God, what kind of issues are we going to face while we're over there? Uh, I hope his network <laughs> God knows less than people are, today. People have already faced at other anomalies, so. Hey, Amit. Yes. <laughs> so, so uh, what is... <laughs> yes, yeah, the, the sound is breaking, sorry. Okay, okay. 